was 2005 and I was doing my first four-wheel drive trip in a vehicle that I really knew nothing about. A four-wheel drive. I knew nothing about tyre pressure, split rims, how to use four-wheel drive, all that sort of stuff. And so, tackling the Gibb River Road as a novice was sure to potentially bring me undone. But first, I was on my way to visit Wyndham. Okay, yeah, we're going in to look at Mulgrew Billabong. First time I've been in this situation for a while. Um, actually a convoy of cars, would you believe? Right, we're still a little way to get down to the Billabong. But uh, this is a little park on top of the rides. Back down start then below us. Be sensational in the wet. This is Telegraph Hill, operated from about 1914 until 1921, assisting ships entering the Wyndham port. That's where we are, there's Wyndham there, and there's the myriad of inlets and things. So let's go down and have a look at the nature reserve. Well, this really is quite gorgeous. Malgu wetlands. Malgu billabong, this one is. These hives are set up so that you can sit and watch the wildlife. There's been interesting stuff happening out here. Look at this lot down here. Under top, just sitting there. This is one he's moving from down there, up there and back again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Crop just goes straight through the middle. Oh, man. Oh, hmm? It was, I have a muzzle on him or something. The whole he couldn't just sit in there. Oh, look at the more coming. Wow. Make a movie here called The Birds, eh? Yeah. <laughs> you turn up the birds. Yeah. What happened to this? Ford might have gone and completely ended the gun. Right, yeah, there wasn't a lot happening there when I was up there, that's for sure. In the early days, I think it was six or six. Yeah, those big things stand on the edge of those trees up there, eh? Yeah, it's from the They're graceful in their own way, aren't they? It's like a pelican when he's on the ground, he's the clumsiest thing out. Sore. Okay, so we're uh, now leaving the um, wetland area and uh, travelling across by uh, an alternative road back to get to the main road to then take us into Wyndham.
This is Wyndham. And uh, Wyndham Port, I think is the first probably thing that's going to crop up for us. And the first thing we see is this huge crocodile. Yes, it means. Right, we're now just walking onto the uh, the wharf at Wyndham. I think we're about to spray someone. Okay, this is the port. Now I've been caught here in that uh, the jetty actually comes on at one end and goes back into the town the other end. The bus has dropped them off and they're walking around and he's going to pick them up. So I've got to try and do the surprise around the other end. Okay, these are the flats between uh, the Wyndham Port. And Wyndham. Okay, just a bit more of Wyndham here. As with a lot of small towns, shops closed. Anybody into these places or what? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's Wyndham Motors. Now, whether it's operational or not. Okay, from what I've seen so far, this seems to be fairly typical of the uh, building area of Wyndham. Wyndham's a very old place. Uh, compared to uh, someone like Kananara, which of course is a new town. It's only 40 odd years old, and with a fairly progressive council by the looks of things, um, this place doesn't jump out and say, I want to live there. Okay, this is the top of Five Ways Hill, and we're looking down towards the Ord River, and all the plains. We assume that when the tide comes in, that all gets covered, but we aren't going to find that out today. The view from up here is phenomenal. Expanding my huge knowledge, this is Cambridge Gulf, which is the main in port, input to the port, which is down there. Somewhere between the trees. Got <laughs> meat works. Crocodile farm's down there somewhere as well. It's the crocodile farm. I was really green when we got out. I couldn't face nice. Yeah, well, okay, this is the uh, the harbour. And somewhere down there is the MV, I think it was, Kalama, which was uh, bombed during the war. Yeah, this is looking back. It's the town site down there. Okay, this is Crocodilus Stupendous. Okay, this is Six Mile Creek. This is the King River Road. We're going to have a look at the, uh, the prison tree. Well, this is obviously underwater at some stage during the year, but uh, the road is dusty, so hopefully we won't get hit tonight. The custodian of the road, obviously. So we're going into Mucholabra Dam. It says that the road is not suitable for normal vehicles. Enter at your own risk. I don't know if it's a normal vehicle or an abnormal vehicle, but we're going to have a try. Okay, this is the Mucholabra Dam. The old dam was built in 7172, and the embankment was 13 metres high. It's now 24 metres. The new dam built in 1999. 
and uh, it holds 2,007 million litres. Okay, this is the dam wall here, and the spillway is further up the creek. Spillways up that way. And this is obviously what all the uh, blasting was back there for. <laughs> now, I don't know what this is about, but there's a plaque there it's supposed to be there. Well, there's actually a plaque stone there. Looks like someone's nicked the plaque. Well, they never put it there, one or the other. The wall extends around from there, around here. And there's a decent old boab tree to have a picnic under. This is the boab tree. Well, it's not, it's just many facets. Thing. Remember when Jeff was uh, telling us on the Ord River about the devastation created by a river going through? Look at this. Just knocked everything over in its path. That's the river. Little devastation over here. Just not step over. No right center. Start of the area. Well, guys, this is the uh, the Boab Prison Tree that uh, when they're bringing the prisoners across up the Gibb River Road, they keep them in here overnight. That little hole there is hollow. The actual tree itself is hollow. They keep the people inside the tree. Of course, we've had uh, people come along since then who've had to carve their names on the tree. I've left a pen knife home, what can I say? That's it. Okay, this is the grotto, and the grotto is down in there. And it's a swimming hole. I don't know whether I particularly have the time to do that today. You go down there, I'm not going to go swimming. But that is the waterfall area, obviously there. But there's no water flowing over. The gorge obviously runs back. Okay, we're about to hit the Gibb River Road, and just a quick comment before we start, and that is that, in my view, tourism is killing tourism. And essentially, what I'm saying there is that these types of uh, roads are being improved and improved and improved to uh, look after the tourist, um, to the point whereby, from what I understand, I can expect this to be almost like a freeway down here. And we think back to places like Coral Bay that once upon a time had an appeal because of what it was. And because more and more people heard about it, more and more people went in, they improved the facilities to the point whereby it's now no longer Coral Bay that people used to go to. It's, uh, it's, become, a, it's become something else. And I wonder whether an actual... And, I, and I've heard criticism of the Mitchell Plateau because of the, the, the standard of the roads and the fact that the facilities when you get in there are substandard. Well, to hell with it. It's in the middle of the nowhere. It's in the outback. And that's what it's supposed to be all about. So, anyway, I'll judge this myself as we go. We're now on the Gibb River Road. Just a little bit of the view at the top end of the Gibb River Road. Okay, this is the part of interest. Uh, the road so far hasn't been too bad. In fact, it's been pretty good. And uh, we've just passed the Old Quest Road turn off. Now, Old Quest Road, um, a big investor in this area as far as uh, it's a, supposedly a working uh, station. Um, they charge you uh, they charge you reasonable or unreasonable, depending how you look at the money to get into the place. And then apparently you also then pay to get into the park to actually go and have a look at the gorges. Um, that doesn't wear with me. Uh, we've, uh, but the comments I've heard have been that it's been overpriced and undervalued. Uh, but for all that, it's interesting the road to the gate was pretty good. So then it was a matter of, okay, what's the road like from there on? And that's what we're on now, and certainly it's deteriorated. Um, but it's still not a bad road for all that, uh, not at this point in time. Um, not by the standards of some that I've been on. 
So um, still the jury is out. Certainly at this point in time, it's nowhere near as bad as the Marini Loop. So we'll see where we go. Okay, this is the Pentecost River. Not coming across at the moment. This is rough. See the damage that's been done by the river when she's been running the full flat. I think we got through that successfully. Right, oh, we're 66 kilometres along the Gibb River Road now from the uh, uh, Wyndham Turnoff. This is the mountain range, and you'll see down there the Pentecost River is running along, and that's the river we crossed just back a bit. Let's go in and have a closer look at that now as we come back here. There's the river flowing around, fairly decent sized river. As I alluded to on the uh, on the actual river itself, with the flooding, a fair bit of stuff washed down. It's the river bank along the bottom of the picture there, or the river plain, put it that way. Now the road so far hasn't been bad. Yeah, there are bad patches, but certainly not. It's, it's not the worst I've ever driven on. Just a couple of kilometres back, we passed the Home Valley Homestead turnoff. Chosen not to go in there. Uh, we're just going to keep pushing down the road for the moment. There's a dust trail down there, and that's obviously where the river crossing is. We came across. Well, we're coming up to 100k. And uh, yeah, the road's still corrugated. Well, we expected that. It's not as bad as what I thought it was going to be. Um, we're into the hills, out of the hills. We actually did the jump up, so we're on a bigger plane now, a higher plane. But uh, the hills still sort of roll along a bit like that. I still see the ridges from time to time. I'm coming into view now. But not a bad drive. Overall, so far. Okay, we're on a little bitumen bit. Now, uh, I don't know why they've done this. Obviously, they don't trust the drivers because there's some bloody idiots out here, they're, as always. But uh, the first bit of bitumen we struck, we uh, ended up crossing the Pentecost River. The next one uh, took us to a photo opportunity. This one just brought us down the hill. I don't know whether it's leading us anywhere or not. Ah, oh, look at this, back onto the dirt. I knew it wouldn't take long. They're spoiling us. Caving into the tourists. That's what's happening. This is actually around the 122, 123 kilometre mark. Basically, just a few observations I've made is as long as you travel in the wheel tracks, and that means that, uh, okay, the stones all been pushed to one side, you generally don't have too much problem. The uh, corrugations can be bad. The main thing is to keep off the rocks. The second thing is to be very careful with the corners. They catch you out. Um, in that the, uh, there's either no camber or reverse camber. And you can be going around the corner and it's a lot, it just goes around a lot. There's a tighter radius to what you anticipate. And I once found myself well and truly on the outside of the road trying to pull it back on again and I wasn't going that quick but at the same time, loose dirt, or well, loose-ish sort of uh, road and out on the wrong, uh, and finding that the, uh, the camber was uh, reverse, which made it interesting. Thank goodness there was nothing coming the other way. 
there are other guys who are running along and they're not slowing down for anything, even if you pull over the side of the road uh, head on and you give them a bit of room and they still just zap through. So, you know, she's right mate. Oh well, but it takes all types I guess. The road is fine as far as I'm concerned. It's not the worst bloody road I've ever been on. It has its rough patches, but uh, it's not bad. But uh, some of the people driving on it are idiots. Okay, we just come up across a couple of signs. First one here, Rolly's jump up, telling us that it's a steep climb. Two, that it's S-bends all the way up. And uh, three, the, to watch out for um, uh, road trains. And guys coming down the road, 100 miles an hour. There's a bit of a drop down the side there. The other thing to be careful on on this road too, or on any road really, are the dips and the floodways. You can bottom out on them if you hit them too hard. And if you bottom out on them, you can do all sorts of damage to the vehicle, of course. Remember we lost a spotlight at one uh, place over near Hermansburg, but uh, it's just a matter of reading the road. In the middle of the day, sometimes it's a bit hard with a red road because you can't see the dips because there's no shadows in them. Okay, just for the hell of it, I decided to go and have a look at this. I jumped past the other uh, homestead. I'm going to go and have a look. Going in. It's a happy camper coming out. Well, I suppose they're happy. Oh boy, I want them to go through. Oh, this is the homestead. Well, we're going to pay for camping. We're going to camp. Uh, speed hop ahead, or yeah, hopefully we might be able to grab something to eat. We'll see. It's quite nice to set up, but I'll leave the cars in the place. Okay, we're going to have a look at this is Ellen Bray Station. And I managed to negotiate a deal to have a uh, a muffin, a scone, and a cup of coffee. For about six bucks fifty. Yeah, I'm not gonna argue about that. And they've even got their own boab tree at the back. Chairs and tables in the garden. Great stuff. Right, this looks all right to me. We're driving for two or three hours. And it is a bit rough out there, but Gee whiz, I'm going to enjoy this. This is your home kitchen. Gee, well, well, why not? It's sexy, very nice, isn't it? This is <laughs> exactly. This is great. Okay, well, this is Ellen Bray Station, and uh, yeah, that scone and the uh, muffin were delicious. They were very nice. And yeah, uh, you can camp here. And they've got their camping spots off to the sides. There's also an airstrip on the property, apparently. Okay, we're heading back to the Gim River Road and onwards. They were telling me how it wasn't all that long ago that the Gim River Road was just a two, a two wheel bush track. Proper real four wheel drive bush track, whereas now it's sort of been, yeah, it has. It's been sanitized almost a highway. Yeah, it's rough. But uh, I think that's probably to make people think that they've, uh, they've had some discomfort. Looks like we've got ourselves a bit of a bushfire over there. As usual, pick up the camera, it's probably over, but um, yeah, just back a whisker, there was a piece of road that was probably worthy of being called in the tradition of uh, the, uh, the Gip River Road. Uh, it was as wide as this, but it was more bulldusty and uh, fairly uh, fairly vicious and nasty. This is smooth again now by comparison. But, um, 
We're not too far short now. Up the turn off for the drive to hell. Uh, Columbaroo Road. For the, uh, up where, uh, up which is the uh, Drysdale Homestead. Okay, we're coming up to the uh, turn off. Columbaroo. To the right. And uh, that takes us to the Drysdale Station, which is the way we're going. Point there. We're on our way to Drysdale Station, which is 59 kilometres. Very set. 305 so far since we left uh, 262 to Columbia Hill. I don't know whether we'll get that far, but certainly 59 to uh, Drysdale is our first, um, it's our first objectives. Last few kilometres has had a, uh, a different type of bush. It's all burnt out there at the moment, of course. Hit himself on his. Ain't slowing down for anybody. Flat straight through. Yeah, he's got his lights on. That's one thing, I suppose. Yeah, just sort of light Savannah type country through here at the moment. I guess that's what you call it. Camp here. It's about 20 minutes to six here. We're about 200 kilometers west of uh, um, Kalanara. And this is a designated camping site. Uh, and we're right on the uh, King William River, I think it is. If you enjoyed this video, there are over 500 more just like it on this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell, and we'll let you know when the next video is available. If you liked this video, hit the like button, and feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching.